mistakes have been made. Nah. Wow! Welcome back to the Rambles Go Fast. Old Big Mech here. And we're snapping ourselves out of it and getting back into painting our army. Let's get into it. <laughs> That's right. It is time for another installment of our Painting an Entire Army as a Normal Person video series that we have started for October. <laughs> yeah, so for those of you that are unfamiliar because you're new here, because there is an awful lot of you that are new here, first of all, welcome. Uh, second of all, yeah, I have a Beast Snaga army that I have been working on all year to add to my considerable work collection. We spent all of uh, kind of the winter months building and converting it and learning all about uh, the lore of the Beast Nagas and how they used to be Scar Boys and, and all that kind of really fun stuff, uh, which I will throw a link up in the description above. Uh, up in the video above, down in the description below. You know what I mean. Uh, I'll throw some links around so that you can check out that building series if you are interested. But as far as the painting part goes, that has been for October. We started off the beginning of the month priming our entire army. And again, this is for normal people. We're not using any airbrushes. We're not using any wet palettes. We're not using any crazy techniques. This is very, very, very simple stuff that absolutely everybody has access to and the skills and techniques to do to really answer the question of how long it takes to paint an army because most of the YouTube armies you see are gamed, right? They use a smaller army such as a combat patrol or something like that. They use a lot of airbrushing and all sorts of crazy techniques and oil washes and things like that. Uh, and they also do really ridiculous time frames like 12 hours or 24 hours. And oftentimes they have help with painting. This isn't that. <laughs> Old Big Mac is approaching this as he is a normal person, one guy with a full-time job, raising four grats, working on the army, uh, in between making all of these zany videos every day for October. So slow sogging, but we are getting through it. On the second installment, we talked about super easy skin recipes using just a base coat and a wash uh, and how nice that turned out. And I've done a little bit of work on the army off camera since then, but now it's time to break the camera out and show you some things on camera as we progress on this army. So let's move all this to the workbench. All right, over here on the workbench, we've got the uh, custom Booster Blasta red squig t-shirt cannon buggy that we've been working on. We'll go ahead and uh, zoom him on out of the frame and talk about these beast nagas. Now, I have been working on the Beast Snaga boys themselves. You can see uh, this knob right here. We're working on getting some black on his boots and his belts and trying to get a better feel for where to go next with these infantry. And unfortunately, it is time to break out everyone's least favorite or most favorite paint, depending on your stance, the contrast paint. Now, I am not a very big fan of the contrast paint. I don't actually own much of it. I don't use much of it. And the problem is this stuff pools really, really badly on flat surfaces so when you're painting you know a vehicle or an armor plate or something like that it doesn't work great but what it does work great on is things like the furs like what we are wearing on the back of our bee snagger right here and so we are absolutely going to use it for its intended purpose and make these furs look great so let's get into it as you see here with everybody turned around there is a wild difference in the textures on these bee snaggas some have furs, some have scales, some have leathers, and they are all different, which is really cool. And we can use that difference with different contrast paints to show the different kind of beasts that they have snagged uh, throughout their time as Scarboys. So we are gonna start with this guy right here because he very much looks like a fur because the first color we are using is Gore Grunta Fur. And this is super simple. You slap it right on. There's no uh, base coating needed. There's no other kind of uh, dry brushes or whatnot. Because remember that we Zenithal highlighted these guys with the spray paint using the uh, light green color uh, over the black. And so because of that, we actually already have a very nice gradient on this fur. And uh, the contrast paint will pick up on that nicely so we do want to be careful not to uh, get our contrast paint onto the skin that we have already finished 
so we will be careful around the head there but other than the edges there's no need to be careful in the middle the fur is the fur is the fur and you've got time to kind of move the paint around and uh, gloop with it and, and kind of do whatever you need to uh, to get it uh, how you want it to look on all the different sections All right, I am pretty happy with that. We've got us some Gore Grunts of Fur on this one's back. And just like that, we've got a few of them done. Now what I have done is I've decided that all the ones with a similar texture are gonna get the same color uh, in the squad just for ease of painting, but also because our um, Zenithal highlight wasn't exactly identical. You can see here on these two guys, for example, the one on the right is much darker than the one on the left because of the way that I sprayed him, and so his fur will actually look darker than the one on the left when they are both dry. So we will actually get some natural variation from that as well. So I know a lot of people don't necessarily like contrast paint or using contrast paints. This is exactly what it was designed for. You've got a decent zenithal highlight or a dry brush going on and a heavily, heavily textured surface uh, for the paint to work on. And that's it. You, you don't want to use it on uh, the armor plating. You don't want to use it on their skin. Uh, the muscle surfaces are too smooth. Uh, but all of these lovely bumpy textures that they have going on on the backs of the bee snaggers are actually just perfect for this. All right, now we get into the fun part about contrast colors. Yes, we have all of these different skins and leathers to go with our fur, and we can keep using neutral browns and greens and earth tones and things like that, and grays. Or we can get crazy and we can do purples and blues and things to show the exoticness of the beasts that the beast snaggas have been hunting. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. All right, to help pick the knob out a little more, and because he's the only one that really has this texture, he's got this kind of bumpy, leathery, crab shell looking thing. We did him in an orange, which will also help draw in our army color, which of course is the bright Tamiya orange. Now we're gonna get extra funny here, and we're actually gonna use orc flesh, which I don't like using on orc skin, but should go really, really nicely on our lizard looking leather armor on here. And there we go. Like I said, as much as I don't like it on the skin, I think that it actually works really nicely on this super textured, bumpy leather surface. All right, now let's get real wild. We're going to use this Lexicon Purple on this. Um, it's sort of similar to the leather on the, uh, the knob, but not really. It's got a smoother texture to it. Um, so I'm not sure on this one. This has been my favorite contrast on smooth. So let's give it a go. Pretty cool gradient that we get there from the light to the dark. Let's see what that looks like when it dries. That was so much fun, I had to do another one, and I think that one looks really cool too. So yeah, we're down to just two bodies left. I don't want to use too, too many colors on here. Uh, we were already at four, including the knob, so I'll pick one more color for these two. And I'm kind of leaning toward this exotic blue color. What do you think? Should we go for it? There's your answer. <laughs> Alright, that actually turned out really wicked cool looking. So cool, in fact, that I had to do the last one in the same blue. And just like that, we have got some serious splashes of color on our bee snags. And you can see here the ones that are already dry, just how nicely the contrast works on the heavily textured stuff. That is truly the key. You only want to use it where there's lots of texture and it comes out looking great. All right, I know I just spent the better part of this video talking about how much I don't like using contrast paint on anything that's flat, that doesn't have texture. 
uh, that has smooth, like, uh, you know, muscles or whatever, I have one exception to that rule, and that is orc pants. Orc pants tend to have a lot of holes in them and stitching and folds, and also they're down at the bottom of the model. You're not really going to look at them all that much, and if they're splotchy, that looks good because they're orcs. Their pants should be splotchy. <laughs> they should be stained. They're not the greatest tailors out there. So I am going to use contrast one more time to get all of the pants done on this squad. So uh, let's do it. And just like our uh, other contrast use, we're just going to slap it right on there, right over the top of our Zenithal Primering. Uh, and let it be a one and done kind of situation and we'll end up with some kind of dirty brownie muddy looking leather pit things now I typically use a really really dark color such as this Gargax sewer on there um, partly to help cover up the splotchiness and partly to help draw the eye away from it we don't really want to be looking at the orc badonkadonks that's not the uh point of the paint job so getting them kind of uh, out of the way is okay you can go a little lighter um and sometimes it works and, and makes for a nice contrast uh, such as what i did on the knob here all right and we are finished with our contrast paints i promise you will not see them again the rest of the painting, at least on this squad. Obviously, we'll have to use them on the squad that we haven't painted and, and the uh, uh, kill rig and the, the uh, mounted boys and whatnot. But this squad, as far as what we're doing for our paint scene, that's it. We're using them on those furs and leathers and on the pants, and they are all set. All right, now it's time to tie all of these boys not only to each other, but to our army as a whole, and for that we need our theme color. Now this would normally be where you did your Bad Moon's yellow, or your uh, uh, you know, Death Skull's blue, or something like that, or black for Goths for being dead hard. Uh, but for me and my armies, and this is something I've talked about a lot on the channel, I like a nice bright color that is unique to the army and and to like my squad uh, but to tie everything together with this little accent color and for my army for my orc army it is Tamiya x6 orange basically there is no other mini paint i have found that matches the intensity of this color and i use it absolutely everywhere on my army you see i've got uh hair pieces that are done with it i've got um metal pieces that are done with it uh, the the little tabard thing like there's just all sorts of orange everywhere and when you put it down on the tabletop and zoom back that's what you really see is all of the orange here's an example on a knob you can see again all these little dags have the orange on them the hair the uh, the boss pole little piece on the pistol so no matter what corner you're looking at him from you're getting some of that accent color without it actually being his clothing or his armor because some of my squads, like this guy right here, who is the knob uh, of a truck boy squad, he's got red all over him, like his red truck. Uh, and so the red needs to be on the armor and be predominant. But you can see we still have the orange up on the boss pole. We have the orange on the checks, on the, uh, <laughs> the graffiti, on the power claw, and on the weapon. The orange is what's tying him to the army. The whole point of doing this, especially for like orcs, is... All of these different squads of boys and knobs and whatnot, they might not necessarily be from the same clan or even the same planet, um, but they're coming together for this WA. And in order to tie them all together for this WA, that's where I get the orange from. Basically, the big mechs that are working on this WA, that's the only color paint their grots have. And so all of the random armor bits and cloth and tabbers and stuff tend to kind of end up this color. And that's what ties them all together. So you get colors for squads to hold squads together um, but you get this color to hold the whole army together uh, so now we need to add it to our beast naga squad and we're actually going to do this in two phases there's going to be the under parts that are orange now and then at the very end there's going to be parts that are orange for example this armor panel on the knob shoulder this is probably going to be metal and then i'll paint the actual skull metal piece on the top the orange or i could do it the other way around and paint the whole armor panel orange and paint the skull in a metal so we'll decide what we're going to do with it but basically we need to get some orange on these guys 
we've got some tabards on these guys that aren't made of the uh, leathers or scales or whatnot, and all of those tabards are going to be the orange. And here is what I've decided. So obviously the tabard is orange. I did the wrist greave in orange and the little inset on the slugga in orange and decided to make the snake on the snake bite orange and the pole silver. And what I'll do on the shoulder pad here is I'll do the shoulder pad in a metal or something like that and then pick out the skull in orange as well as this little drilled out flat plate on his power claw uh, as I get to the last steps. But now he's starting to tie in with the rest of the army, which you can see here, the beast boss as well, which is done, has the orange going on a lot of his trim parts. Now I wanna show you just how close this guy is to being actually done. And for that, we're gonna do some flat black and then some metal, uh, and we're pretty much there. So this one already has some black on him on the boots and one of the belts. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of it now. All right, and with the black done on the belts and boots and a couple of the trim pieces, we got the little hydraulic hose on the power claw and the, the little uh, strap on his arm and inside the barrel, it's time to do the last couple of things. So I'm going to slap some red inside of his mouth. We're going to do the bone on all the teeth, and then we're going to slap the metal on it. And for the metal, we are getting, going good old-fashioned lead belcher. Now watch as this model absolutely comes alive with just the metal paint. I think a big problem with the Beast Snagas is actually the factory paint job. Games Workshop painted them very clean and very white, um, and you just kind of lost all of the metal and metallic and cyborg bits on them, uh, and they really didn't look as futuristic as they could. So I think uh, making them darker really bringing out all of these metal pieces and contrasting them versus the mini instead of uh, having white painted armor panels uh, is really going to make a difference. And our metal is complete. And just like that, we have a completed miniature. Now, obviously, there is a lot more we can do to him and will do to him. We can wash the metal and finish picking out that uh, skull on the top. Uh, but you can see we've got white on the bone stuff and the teeth. We've got red in the mouth. We've got black on all our straps. We've got gold on our bullets. This guy is done. This is totally good enough for a tabletop. Yeah, he's no golden demon up close, but you slap him down in the squad and you zoom on out and he is a right proper leader of a squad of Beast Naga boys. So on the next video, we will have the rest of this squad done. Who knows how much else will be done, but we'll talk about advanced things that you can do to this to really sell the effect and bring it home. We'll do some washes on the scar tissue and the metal. We'll do some weathering effects and we'll get the basing done. But yeah, pretty much base it and go. You've got yourself an infantry. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of painting an entire army as a regular guy. As you can see, I've gotten bogged down a little, right? 1,500 points is a lot of points, but also we got a lot accomplished in not a whole lot of time. I know contrast paints, speed paints, whatever you want to call them, aren't everyone's favorite, but they do have a place, especially on the palette, 
of those of us that just want to get an army on the board and have it look halfway decent. Those heavily textured surfaces, the, the furs and the scales and the leathers really, really work well with the contrast paints. And then again, the whole the muddy pants thing really works. And you can see how using some basic shades and contrast and then regular paints with our black and our metallics really made that whole mini pop without a whole lot of effort. There's no advanced techniques there. We're not doing any wet blending. We're not messing with a palette. We haven't even dry brushed anything yet. This is totally within your wheelhouse, anybody's wheelhouse, in order to paint their army and have it look decent on the tabletop. And really, that's what most of us are here for. Now, that being said, I do hope you join me on the next installment where I am going to talk about some more advanced techniques uh, that you should probably give a try. It's pretty simple. We're just messing with some washes, a little bit of dry brushes, some sponges, and we're going to talk about basing again. But yeah, all, again, super simple things that everybody has. I've only used two paintbrushes for this entire project so far. That should tell you just how keeping it simple we are doing it here. All right, that's enough for this episode. As you can see, it is really dark outside, inside. The lighting is terrible, not just for shooting videos, but especially for painting minis. So it's time for me to go do something else and start working on another video that you'll see tomorrow for Worktober. And until then, walk on!